Hello everybody, this is the second video of the series ASP.NET Core Basics. Today's topic is Motor View Controller. Please check out the description for a good explanation link about the MVC pattern. Previously, I've added the data provider in memory news data, which reads information from the New York Times API, and we are going to register it in the configure services method. We start by adding the dependency microsoft.aspnetcore.mvc and later we are going to add MVC to the project's middleware and services. MVC requires we to configure the access path for controllers and actions, for which we are going to modify the line app.mvc in order to use a delegate. As we can see, the configure root takes the name of the controller, the action, and additionally, an optional ID parameter. We can also configure a default root. Now we can start creating controllers for our project. The namespace microsoft.aspnetcore.mvc contains the controller class, which gives us access to contextual information about the HTTP requests and responses. The responses may be in terms of complex objects encapsulated in an object implementing the iAction result interface. The methods file, view, content, JSON, among others, are methods inherited from the controller class. Each of them returns an object implementing the iAction result interface. A controller section can return an iAction result object. However, you can also return objects out of the context, such as the object result class. Let's create a testing controller that returns an object result object. We can see that the returned object type is JSON, which will work in the same way as the JSON method. Now we are going to replace it with return view. This error indicates that the CSHTML file was searched in two locations. The default location is views, controller name, action name. We are going to add the CSHTML file in a few minutes but we can see that the view method can receive several parameters that allow us to define the views path and pass an object to the views model. The models in MPC correspond to the project's data models, which can come from different data sources, including databases and the memory data. In addition, the concept of view model enables us to read the model state and enables the transport between view and controller. Now we are going to add the home controller class and we are going to refer to the iNews data and iReader services inside the constructor. Now we are going to add the view models folder in the home page view model class. Back to the home controller. Now we are going to use the services we added before in the new index section to be created.
Finally, we create the views home folder structure and the index.cshtml file, which will be the visual representation of the view result object returned by the index action. In the index view file, we can see several elements like the model keyboard, which refers to the object type sent to the view from the controller. We can also see the for each keyword, which obviously represents a loop. And we also see the HTML keyword that tells us that we are using an HTML helper. There are several helpers included by MVC. However, we can also create our own or use third-party helpers. For the example service that I added at the beginning of the video, I created a class named NewsDoc, which is part of the structure that delivers the New York Times API. This class is going to be used to create a new stock view model class. In this class, we are going to add several annotations to the properties, which are used in the view to establish requirements that must comply with the information that is centered for the field. This time we are going to use the view model to display the information, and then we are going to add code for information input. In the created view, we can see the model's properties used to display the information to the user. The view for entering information is obtained in a similar way to the other views, using a GET request. When the data has already been entered, the information is sent to the server with a POST request. Let's add the CREATE action in the corresponding view. Now we can see the piece of code html.beginform that creates a form to send the information to the controller with a POST request. Let's create the action to receive the information in the controller. Creation runs fine, but what happens if the user refreshes the page for some reason? And what if the information are financial numbers? We see that the information is sent again, so it is important to implement the post redirect get pattern, which prevents refreshing the page and send the information again. And finally, we are going to add model state.isValid, which validates the information entered from the HTML form. If the data is valid, the new record is created. For this example, the data only brings information from the New York Times API. We are going to be using database storage in the next video about Entity Framework. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you next time.